David Canadine, a historian, went, Harumph! How can you have a patriarchal queen? Well, of course, it's easy. We've got one. Look at her. This is a woman who, in how many years has she been on that chair? Come on, tell me, how long has she been there? 60? 60-odd years. I mean, she still prevails over a regime that prioritises and privileges male inheritance. Never mind the opportunities for Catholics or for Muslims to enter that closed coterie that is called the family firm. And it was in the moment, of course, of uh, Princess Diana, who I'm sure not many people here would have been very enamoured of, but in my opinion she did something really, really important. She publicly challenged a Prince of Wales for being crap at being a human being putting her on parade and not being interested in what she had to say. Who abused her actually by enlisting this body of an ingenue into a patriarch a profoundly and unaltered patriarchal system that was part of the huge patriarchal establishment that still prevails in England. So I think you know you're right to raise as a problem do women make any difference to the way in which we conduct our politics? You are right. However, if I may say so, you're also wrong. Because there is not one government on planet Earth, apart from perhaps Iceland, and I do believe Wales, where women are in the majority, where women have critical mass. And of course that goes to your point about, well, well you know, it's a very difficult thing. Women, you know, increasingly, move into any environment, corporate, political or whatever. But actually, in order to survive, the terms are that you have to abide by the rules of engagement. And that means that your presence is conditional on your readiness to endorse the prevailing culture. That, that raises very important political problems for us, which is that what we have to imagine, and this was the point actually of what I was trying to say, I wasn't trying to say what we need is women in power. What I was trying to say was actually profoundly different, and it's this. You have to factor gender in if you want to make sense of the crisis of capitalism. And gender helps you to think about its nature, about what drives it, and why it's the disastrous thing that it is. And actually that responsibility falls to all of us, men, women, a lot of us, and it's something that helps men think about, and all of us think, about what it is that produces this very peculiar thing called masculinity. Why is it more important these days for men's masculinity to be preserved at all costs, when nobody's worried about what it means these days to be a modern woman. A modern woman looks like me, looks like any of the women in this room. We wear trousers, we wear frocks, we wear all sorts. Men don't wear frocks. There is something believed to be so fragile and yet so powerful about masculinity that it must be defended as masculinity. It can't be defended as just being human.